Okay, so let's discuss the whole Bart K situation. I had put out a video on how basically um, when you consume a high amount of animal protein, how that leads to an acid load in the body. Now, I had also shown how if you are excreting a certain amount of acid, how that can basically overwhelm the kidney's capacity to eliminate that acid. How numerous um, balance studies have shown that in over 50% of people, if you are excreting around 40 milli equivalents of acid per day, there is some retention of that acid. So in other words, balance studies have shown from the Lehman group and the Lennon group back in the 1960s that if you excrete you know, about 39 milli equivalents of acid, around half of the population will be retaining some of that acid. And the retention goes up and up. Um, so... Bart needs to understand how physiology actually works and how basically consuming dietary acid loads can overwhelm the system. I also showed about a dozen human clinical studies. Uh, one of them was the Bellevue study, which was a metabolic ward study of four months and then went out to a full year. Now remember, Bart has claimed, this is a positive claim, that all you have to do is eat meat and the associated fat and you will be fine. However, you can't just, you cannot say that. That is, not a, that is not a positive claim that can be supported simply because we know that the Bellevue study, the four month metabolic ward study where they were just eating meat, a little bit of organs and the associated fat uh, led to negative calcium balance. So it was in, uh, this was Anderson and Stephenson who's you know basically a famous doctor, Arctic explorer, et cetera where they consumed what Barr is saying is completely fine, meat, some organs, the associated fat, and they were in negative calcium balance. Uh, after four months, they were still somewhere between a minus 175 to minus 250 milligrams of calcium being lost out of the body every single day. Now, you would have to show me a study that proves that all of that calcium gets completely shut off. Because if it doesn't, then you can't say that it's completely fine. So in other words, you have no evidence, no evidence at all to prove that it's completely fine to eat meat and associated fat. You can, you also state, oh, well, this person has been on carnivore for 70 years. Are they consuming a calcium supplement? Are they consuming a lot of dairy and hitting a high amount of calcium? Remember, you said just meat and associated fat. You did not say you, um, that you also should be consuming dairy, uh, so you listing off one person that's been on carnivore for like 50 years, that they're 75 and still thriving as carnivore. Again, what is that person consuming? Are they on a multivitamin that has calcium or vitamin D? Um, are they consuming any dairy? We would need to know those things. And then also we have no idea where's their bone mineral density scans. No idea of that. So I think that, um, that you, you, so you can't just say that. Is, is what I'm trying to get at. Basically, he's making positive claims that, um, that again, meat, all you have to, all that you have to eat is meat and the associated fat and you are going to be totally fine. Show me the proof. Where's the proof? Where's the proof that, that, that the negative calcium balance stops? You would have to show me proof. So I'm actually uh, doing my due diligence here and giving people a, a, a warning and a caveat that eating the meat and associated fat, which is what you say is okay to do, has been proven in a metabolic ward study to lead to negative calcium balance. In other words, if you want to come and learn more than just eat meat and associated fat, you come to my channel because I'm going to actually get into the, the, the caveats, the nuances of all this. I don't, and, 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 and that's what's important. So show me the proof that the calcium shuts off, first of all. Show me that proof. Now, I had also shown... Um, many studies looking at the, the, the bone mineral density the, and, the, and the mineral content of the Inuit, which was in men over the age of 40, was about 15% less bone mineral content compared to uh, Caucasians. And in women, it was 30, up to 30% less bone mineral content. They were also said to consume anywhere from 500 to 2,500 milligrams of calcium per day in their diet, and that they were not vitamin D deficient in those studies as well. So... You have also a population 
that, and they, these were in the older Inuit, and this was published in 1970 on Point Hope and Point Barrow. Point Hope, um, those Inuit were consuming a traditional diet, and certainly the people that were studied that were over 40 years old, um, which since that paper was published in 1970, if they were over 40 years old, would have been born at least 1930, but some of them born in 1900, so certainly consuming a traditional diet as well from that perspective for most of their life, if not all of their life showed that they uh, had a significantly lower bone mineral content. Uh, and so that's another cautionary note. Another cautionary note too is looking at the bones of uh, the extinct Inuit um, showed many compression vertebral fractures as well. So in this, the studies also indicated a much higher rate of osteoporosis based on the uh, low bone mineral content of the Inuit. So another a note of caution, which is from, from my channel, you're getting, and you're getting much more context than what Bart would like you to know. Bart just wants to basically get clicks like he, he says. He just cares about views. I don't care you know, about views. I just care about actually understanding what is the healthiest diet for myself and my followers. And that is, and that is why I've brought up these studies in this point. So number one, where is your proof that, uh, that, the, that the calcium loss shuts off? Where's your proof of that? You have one. Um, number two, I showed several studies also confirming negative calcium balance, putting people, they started in positive when they started consuming a high animal protein not offset by some type of base, uh, that it put them in negative calcium balance. Four of those studies show that. Two, based on estimations of about 30 to 40% bioavailability of the calcium, would also throw them in negative calcium balance of about 60 to 100 milligrams. So they were very likely in negative calcium balance. So that's six studies essentially showing negative calcium balance, eating a high animal protein diet, um, which you've never addressed with your followers. The main key too is that you were in your videos, your first couple of videos, you were saying you were that I was wrong based on Stewart's model. You never made it clear that Stewart's model is just a construct and a theory. A theory can't prove anyone wrong. So your your model that, oh, bicarbonate is a, a, a dependent variable, it doesn't prove me wrong. It does not prove me wrong in the slightest. A theory cannot prove anyone wrong or anything wrong. Um, the other statements too made, like ammonia is not produced in the kidneys. 100% ammonia is produced in the kidneys. Uh, in fact, many if many papers have shown that about 80% of the ammonium that hits the uh, collecting duct in the urine comes from the secretion of ammonia with hydrogen ions from the loop of Henle. 80% of the ammonium is coming from the, the ammonia. So yes, you do produce more ammonia, which is a toxic substance in the kidneys when you eat a high animal protein diet. You said that was incorrect. Show me the papers that ammonia is not formed in the kidneys. 100% is. Again, 80% of the ammonium that hits the collecting duct is coming from ammonia, a toxic substance. And that is produced in a much higher amount when you eat a high animal protein diet. Now, you like to say offset by what base? What are you referring to as a base? It's not sodium. Sodium uh, and sodium bicarbonate is not the base, Bart, okay? And prove me, tell me, show me how sodium is a base, okay? And, I'll sh and I'm gonna show you physiology, how physiology works, how bicarbonate is the base, okay? When you consume sodium bicarbonate. And you were trying to say, well, well what happens when you consume bicarbonate in the stomach? It turns to CO2, so how is it the bicarbonate? Okay, look up the alkaline tide, Bart, if you wanna understand how this works physiologically. When you consume bicarbonate in the stomach, yes, you will produce CO2, right? It combines with the, the hydrogen. You're going to deplete the, the hydrogen concentration, but the parietal cell is going to compensate for that, okay? This has been proven in animal studies. It compensates for that. So you've depleted the hydrogen ions, so now you're going to, the parietal cell is going to secrete the hydrogen ions to get the acid back up, right? To get the hydrogen ion back up to where it was. What happens in the parietal cell when you secrete the acid from carbonic anhydrase? You reabsorb bicarb. Hence, essentially sodium bicarbonate is 100% bicarbonate bioavailability from the alkaline tide. In other words, yes, bicarbonate is the base. Show me and prove to me how sodium is the base. It is not. You also said in your video that chloride, because if chloride goes higher and you're increasing the negative charge, that yes, it will pull protons out of the solution. Doesn't, does no such thing. You are not pulling protons out of the solution. You may dissociate water and form a proton, 
But what happens when you dissociate water too, Bart? You form an equimolar amount of hydroxide ions, minus. So one minus for one plus. So tell me how you are changing the positivity by dissociating water to add protons, because you are going to add the exact same amount of hydroxide ions. So you're, we've been waiting over a month for you to explain how the Stewart model explains acidosis. Please explain to me how chloride in the, net, in the increase in the minus charge is increasing the proton concentration, but in, in doing so thereby doing that is increasing the overall positive charge to offset the negative chloride when you are forming an exact same amount of hydroxide ions. Laughable, laughable. I wanna hear your explanation for that, okay? Um, so several things that we've proven incorrect with BART. One, we know high animal protein diets absolutely leads to harmful effects in regards to negative calcium balance. I had shown increased markers of bone breakdown and decreased markers of bone formation. He says they're markers, so whatever. But in my opinion, when you talk about a negative calcium balance and you have inc significantly increased markers of bone uh, breakdown and decreased markers of bone formation, that is a problem. That is definitely a problem. Okay, so we, so we have human clinical studies showing the negative calcium balance and the increased breakdown markers and decreased bone formation markers. You can say so what, but in my opinion, I, I, as a person that is consuming uh, high amounts of animal protein, that would be cons concerning to me. Um, and again, you made the positive claim that is completely fine to just eat meat and, and associated fat. So we have no mechanistic idea of how... Uh, an increase in negative charge chlorides can lead to a change in positive charge for electroneutrality. Please explain that mechanism. You were stating that I was in definitively incorrect in your first couple of videos based on the Stewart model until I t told your followers that that Stewart model is a construct and a theory and hence cannot prove me incorrect. So how have you proven me wrong? Show me the experimental study that proves me wrong, right? You demand a hundred year study and thousands of twins to prove someone's point, but you have no study of your own to prove your point that fruits are terrible and that animal food with animal fat is completely fine. It's you, you're, you're exempt from any uh, of the basically crazy amount of evidence you are demanding from us. But when we, we show you really good metabolic ward studies and, and issues with that, you know, we can't show deaths in four to four months to 12 months, of course not. But I'm showing very important biomarkers on a, a mineral balance and mineral uh, bone breakdown and bone formation markers that are looking worse when you don't offset it with base. Because yeah, base is bicarbonate and citrate. Tell me what else is base. What is base then in the body if it isn't that? I would love to know. Um, also, bicarbonate is probably both a dependent and independent variable. It is not just a dependent because if you want to give someone sodium bicarbonate, uh, you can hit, it's called hitting peak alkalosis before performance. You, you should know this, right? You, you did exercise physiology. Um, you can push someone's bicarbonate level well above 7.45 and out of range by consuming sodium bicarbonate, which I just explained from the alkaline tide and how sodium bicarbonate actually works physiologically. That is the bicarb that is driving up the bicarb, not the sodium. Um, and so, yeah, it's it, it can. And the key here is that if you are consistently eating a high enough amount of animal protein three times a day, you are overwhelming the kidney's ability to handle that. That has been proven in balance studies that these individuals are retaining the acid and then you have to deal with the acid in numerous ways and some of those metabolic work, uh, balance studies have shown significant losses of calcium that could only come from the bone so again i think i'm providing a, a good service here in regards to and showing good evidence in human clinical studies of the potential harms um, and also the evidence of the harms on the bone from the inuit uh, they, they did not have good bone mineral uh, content and they had a high rate of osteoporosis uh, and they had a, a high rate of compression fracture, fractures in their vertebra. Uh, so you saying that a few people have been on carnivore for 40, 50 years doesn't tell me anything. So, and you're the one claiming that it's okay to just eat meat and, and the associated fat. And I'm showing a lot of evidence to say, actually, we need to be very cautious here. It, it seems like there's a lot of evidence that would suggest otherwise. So... I think in the end, um, 
you made a positive claim that I'm incorrect based on the theory, which can't prove me wrong. Uh, yeah, the kidneys make ammonia, of course. Yes, bicarbonate uh, is a base. And I just proved and showed you how, and from the physiological standpoint, how this works um, through the alkaline tide formation of when you secrete hydrogen in the stomach, you absorb a bicarbonate. So if you deplete the hydrogen ions with by consuming bicarbonate, you, you make more equi molar amounts. Um, can't wait to see your Stewart model acidosis approach. Uh, please explain to me also how I'm wrong on my models of how animal protein brings an acid load into the body. Are you saying it doesn't bring an acid load? And where's your proof that um, the body does not become overwhelmed? When I clearly show that the body does become overwhelmed through hyperfiltration, increased loss of calcium leading to negative calcium balance. That's an overwhelming of the system. I think that's very clear. Where's your proof that it's not overwhelming the system? The proof would have to be a complete shut off of calcium very quickly. It didn't even shut off, not even close after four months. Still 175 to 200 milligrams of calcium being lost every single day from uh, most of that likely from the bone. So I, I, I just, I, I don't get it. I really don't understand um, basically where you're even coming from if you actually look at the evidence.